Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to say a few words and present the president who will sign uh, the directive about which uh, uh, I'll say a few words in a moment. Then uh, when the president speaks, he will conclude by uh, introducing um, uh, Colonel Orton, and then uh, I will introduce uh, Senator Glenn and Congressman uh, Conyers. I want to uh, begin, however, by acknowledging uh, that the Majority Leader, Senator Mitchell, uh, is here, uh, and also uh, uh, Chairman Ron Dellums of the House Armed Services Committee, a real leader along with his committee uh, on this uh, subject. Uh, Senator Larry Pressler, and we appreciate the bipartisan support for the initiative the President uh, is announcing today. Uh, Senator Carl Levin and Senator Jeff Bingaman, two leaders uh, on this subject who have worked uh, tirelessly. Uh, Congressman Jim Bilbrey and Congressman Larry LaRocca and Congressman Sam Farr, uh, all of whom have been deeply involved in this subject. We appreciate uh, their efforts. Uh, the director of OMB, Leon Panetta, and uh, the assistant, the director of management in OMB, uh, uh, Phil Later, uh, who has been my partner in this uh, National Performance Review, along with Leon, and we appreciate uh, their work. Roger Johnson, the head of the General Services Administration, who has been a tremendous uh, champion of uh, reform and progress uh, in this area. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we said uh, on September 7th, when the National Performance Review was released, that it would not sit on a shelf. In fact, uh, what I remember best about that event was one of President Clinton's uh, remarks. Uh, when he looked at the report, he said all the places in here where it says the President should, this President will. Well, we got started uh, right away with Congress as our partner, and I, I want to uh, uh, acknowledge uh, a member of Congress, uh, uh, Maloney from uh, New York, Carolyn Maloney, I believe, is, uh, is here also. I'm sorry to, to uh, overlook you, Carolyn. Thank you. Uh, been very, very active in helping us. Uh, with Congress as our partner, we have already done a lot. First, let me mention the executive orders and presidential directives. The President has signed executive orders establishing clear customer service standards in every federal agency. The process is now underway. Some agencies uh, are nearly completed with it. Some of those customer service standards have already been published. Exe an executive order reducing agency internal regulations by 50 percent, one creating labor management partnerships, and a new approach to working with federal employees to implement these changes. Uh, another building approaches to regulatory planning uh, and review. Uh, including uh, an innovative new feature bringing uh, state and local governmental leaders into the process to review the impact on state and local uh, governments. And today, another executive order reducing unfunded mandates. He has also issued uh, directives establishing a new community empowerment board and strategy that will allow us to get to work coordinating the resources of government to work for local communities with maximum flexibility and with minimum red tape. Uh, he's chartered the Presidential Management Council under Phil Later, so we can begin a immediately applying the lessons of the quality revolution that managers in business know about and apply them to government. He's ordered agencies to come up with a detailed plan reducing the number of full-time federal jobs by the 252,000 urged in the report. Uh, a lot of progress, and we're interested in pursuing every single one of the NPR recommendations, big and small. Today, we tackle some big ones. We're here to announce a new and important step in the National Performance Review. Specifically, we're announcing a broad legislative effort containing more than 40 of the proposals listed in the National Performance Review. This is the first wave of the legislative action that is required to implement the National Performance Review. From the very beginning, we cautioned everyone that this effort is going to take time. It will not all come immediately. Some of it can be done by executive order. Some of it requires legislation. This is the first wave of the legislative changes. It will eliminate special interest uh, 
privileges. The famous wool and mohair subsidy, for example, will be eliminated uh, uh, not just on a, an annual uh, appropriation cycle, but, but uh, in the authorization uh, uh, completely. Uh, we're going to eliminate duplication, whether it's polar orbiting satellites or HUD vouchers. We're going to eliminate the obsolete, eliminate fraud, cut red tape, and give federal workers the power and flexibility they need to do the job right. Second, we'll move on procurement reform. No single area is more important, because after all, we're talking about a system that takes 49 months to buy a computer system, uh, where at one agency it took 23 written uh, approvals just to buy a personal computer for uh, uh, someone's uh, job, where we have those 10 pages of regulations for buying things like ashtrays, where it takes at least three months to buy something private companies can purchase in only two weeks. That has got to change. And I'll tell you something else that has to change. Too often suppliers who give us good products and services at good prices never hear from the federal government again. We're going to change that and give good suppliers business again and again. And those who don't produce are the ones we'll stop calling. We're very pleased with what's been done on procurement reform so far. Uh, let me just brag on some of our agencies. Uh, we're rewriting the 1,600-page federal acquisition regulation. Uh, Veterans Affairs, for example, is reinventing their partnerships with industry. Uh, GSA is testing new ways to buy computers. At SBA, Erskine Bowles has compressed the form most commonly used by businesses from 18 pages down to one page. Uh, and in a few moments uh, after the President speaks, we're going to hear from some of our allies in Congress about legislation to further implement procurement reform uh, on the Senate side and on the House side with legislation uh, that is uh, uh, being intensively developed uh, by several uh, House committees, and John Conyers will speak about that uh, involving his work and also the work of uh, Chairman uh, Ron Dellums and other uh, committee chairs. Uh, Senator Glenn will talk about the legislation that embodies his work and that of the Armed Services Committee on the Senate that will be introduced uh, today. Uh, we are also uh, uh, strongly supportive of an amendment uh, now being negotiated uh, under the leadership of Senator Jeff uh, Bingaman reforming uh, Davis-Bacon and the Service Contract Act. Uh, those negotiations are continuing and we will work for the success of that amendment. Today, the President is going to do something that doesn't require any legislation. He will sign a directive streamlining procurement through electronic commerce. With his signature, we begin a process that will move us from a paper-based system to an automated electronic system when it comes to soliciting business from the government, ordering invoices, payments, and everything else. We not only want to eliminate paperwork, we want to eliminate paper. That's good for a lot of reasons. Uh, it makes good environmental sense, but it also makes good business sense. It increases competition. It gets us better bids. It helps small business. All the experience shows that it brings many more small businesses into the process, and it reduces costs significantly. We have some studies that show the new system taking a process now requiring three weeks and cutting it to five days. And so now to sign this directive and describe it, uh, I have the pleasure of presenting the person whose vision has inspired this process. He is creating a government that works better and costs less, the President of the United States, Bill Clinton.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Presidential Memorandum on Electronic Commerce, which I have just signed, is, as the Vice President said, a direct result of the work done by the National Performance Review. It will make our antiquated paper-based procurement system accessible to anybody with a personal computer. It will open up a world of possibilities to small businesses in America and drive down costs to taxpayers. This demonstrates why the National Performance Review has been and will continue to be a success. The NPR has become a true action plan for unprecedented cost cutting and reinvention across the entire governmental process. It's dedicated to reforms that will give us a government that actually does work better and costs less. We want to give the taxpayer a more efficient government to reduce the deficit, to provide new resources so that we can also respond to urgent national needs. The proposals we announced today meet every one of those objectives. By sending to Congress a bill that produces billions in savings, we will now be able to finance an expansion of our anti-crime activities at a time when the country desperately needs it. Reinventing government is working, and I want to say a special word of thanks to the Vice President for his outstanding leadership on this project. Today I am sending to Congress a significant package of spending cuts totaling $10 billion based on the National Performance Review and fulfilling a promise I made to further reduce the deficit by spending cuts in that amount, sending, excuse me, spending cuts in that amount to Congress that could be passed in this calendar year. The Government Reform Act phases out federal support for wool, mohair, and honey, consolidates environmental satellite programs, streamlines the operations of the Departments of Agriculture and Housing and Urban Development, reduces costly regulation and proposes other reforms reflecting more than 20 deficit-cutting recommendations of the NPR. These cuts are part of our commitment to put our economic house in order. With the passage of the economic plan last summer, containing about $500 billion in deficit reduction, we've helped to drive down interest rates to historic low levels to keep inflation down. This has meant more private sector job growth in one year than in the previous four, increases in housing starts, and in mid-October, we know now that auto sales have climbed by 18.4 percent, the largest amount in several years. Orders for heavy equipment continue to rise. While we have still clearly got a very long way to go and many more good-paying jobs to produce, this recovery is beginning to shift into a more promising phase. That's why our progress on continued deficit reduction is very important. We have to maintain the government's credibility in holding down the deficit, keeping interest rates down in order to provide a stable climate for long-term growth. We must now move to achieve real savings through procurement reform. While the private sector is becoming more flexible, more innovative, government has become, in many ways over the last 10 years, even more bureaucratic. At a time when all businesses are looking for better suppliers and lower prices, the government is too often losing suppliers and actually paying higher prices by putting up so many costly hurdles and requirements in our procurement system. Procurement waste is costing the taxpayers tens of billions of dollars and it has to stop. We must fundamentally reform this system, saving billions of dollars and using that money in ways that meet the basic needs of the American people. Senator Glenn and Congressman Dellums and Congressman Conyers and the other distinguished members of Congress who've joined us here today have introduced a very important procurement reform legislation, which will make it much easier for agencies to buy the same commercial products ordinary consumers and businesses buy off the shelf. It will cut down enormously on paperwork. It will speed deliveries. It will provide new incentives for small businesses. At the same time, the Department of Defense has requested, with my support, immediate congressional authorization to undertake seven pilot projects to reform their own procurement processes. These projects will allow the department to demonstrate innovative approaches to acquiring commercial jet aircraft and aircraft engines, as well as items like clothing and medical supplies. Cost-saving innovations like these are critical to our ability to meet future military needs within our budgetary limits. I might say that the Department of Defense has been so uh, confident of these things that after we completed our bottoms-up review, uh, the leaders at the Defense Department said they thought one of the ways that we could actually meet our defense needs over the next five years within the tough budgetary restrictions imposed would be to require these kinds of procurement reforms. And I want to thank the Department of Defense for 
the aggressive attitude that they have taken toward this, and we all look forward to the results that they will be achieving now. Procurement reform also will enhance national security. Procurement regulations today virtually force defense contractors to develop business practices and products that are unique only to the military. This division of industry in the United States into defense and non-defense sectors results in higher prices to the government, less purchasing flexibility to the armed services, and too often actually denies our military state-of-the-art technologies found in the commercial marketplace. Today, five of the top 10 U.S. semiconductor producers re refuse defense business because of the burdens and special requirements the government imposes. Finally, procurement can work by allowing the government to run more like a business, buying products based on price and other important considerations, such as how well a supplier has performed in the past. We want the marketplace, not the bureaucracy, to determine what we buy and what we pay. According to the NPR report, if Congress does its part in passing the legislation, and we do our part in making it work, we could save more than $5 billion in the first year of this reform alone. We ought to take some of that money that your government has been wasting all these years and use it to uphold government's first responsibility, which is to keep our citizens safe here at home. With that money, we can make our crime bill even stronger. We can make sure we put at least 50,000 police officers on the street over the next five years. We can help states to build more boot camps so we can take young criminals off the street and teach them more respect for the law and give them a chance to avoid a life in prison and live a life of constructive citizenship. We can have more drug courts like the one the Attorney General started in Florida and the one our administration is helping to launch here in D.C. so we can stop sending tens of thousands of criminal addicts back onto the street every year where they'll commit more crimes if they don't get treatment first. I want Congress to pass this crime bill and pass the savings I've asked to help pay for it. I want them to know that if these cuts aren't passed, I'm going to come back with more cuts. And if those aren't passed, I'll come back with still more. I'll keep coming back until we have the money we need to make America safer. Procurement reform shares a common border with many of our most important goals, saving taxpayer money, reinventing government, strengthening our military, improving our economy. But in a larger sense, the steps we are taking here today are also about proving to the American people that we can honestly and seriously deal with the issues that matter most to them and that for too long, too many have felt powerless to change. We can and will cut the deficit. We can and will run a government that works better and costs less. We can and will turn those savings to helping America, including helping more Americans be safer in their homes and on their streets. I'd like to close by introducing to you Lieutenant Colonel Brad Orton. He has a story to tell that reveals the price we continue to pay by doing nothing in this important area. During the Gulf War, the Air Force placed an emergency order for 6,000 Motorola commercial radio receivers. But because Motorola's commercial unit lacked the record-keeping systems required to show the Pentagon that it was getting the lowest available price, the deal reached an impasse. The issue was resolved in a remarkable way that Lieutenant Colonel Orton will now describe involving the Japanese government. This should never happen again. Today is about taking responsibility for doing better, working together to build a better America. We can do this, Congress, the administration, the American people. Please join me in welcoming uh, Lieutenant Colonel Orton. Thank you, Mr. President. And this is an interesting story. Early on in Operation Desert Shield, as it was known at the time, the Air Force determined that we needed to improve communication between our units and that commercial radio equipment uh, produced by Motorola was uniquely suited to our needs. Now, we attempted to obtain this radio equipment from Motorola by issuing a normal or expedited contract, which we call a letter contract. Uh, when Motorola received this contract, they were a little bit reluctant to proceed based on all of the contract requirements that were in that, that were in that contract. They were particularly concerned about the certified cost and pricing data requirements and the federal uh, cost accounting standards requirements.
that they would have been required to comply with. When we received the purchase description on this equipment that was needed, we were a little bit uncertain about the mix of equipment that was involved, the mix of uh, handheld radios, antenna systems, base systems, uh, base uh, stations as they call them, support equipment. And we were concerned about whether or not all this equipment really was commercial equipment that had been sold on uh, substantial quantities to the public. And this is particularly key because if it's sold in substantial quantities to the public, then we could be able to uh, waive the requirements for this uh, cost and pricing data. Also, because the contract was in excess of $10 million and required this cost and pricing data, the contractor would be required to have an accounting system, and this accounting system would have to comply with the federal cost accounting standards. Motorola told us uh, that they were a commercial contractor and they could not sign this letter contract that we'd sent them because they couldn't meet the demands of these two provisions that we've talked about. And as we regrouped to uh, analyze the problem and consider alternatives, uh, we were told that there was another strategy that was being considered and it was being pursued. And the Japanese government had decided to contribute much of this needed equipment to the Air Force. And they went out and did procure and purchase uh, some 6,000 radio receivers, which they delivered to the Air Force. Although ultimately, we probably could have worked with Motorola and uh, would have been able to par perhaps resolve some of the issues with them, in enabling their division to provide commercial equipment without having to change extensively their accounting system, uh, it would have taken some time, time that we didn't really have. The Japanese were able to do this very rapidly, and uh, much more rapidly than we would have been able to do it under the circumstances. Thank you, Colonel. When a, the government of another nation has to step in and buy something for the U.S. military because our procurement regulations are so crazy, that's a, a clear wake-up call that we have got to have the reforms that are being uh, announced today. I want to also acknowledge, Mr. President, uh, Bill Perry and John Deutsch from the Defense Department who have worked so long and hard on uh, the military parts of this, along with uh, Chairman Dellums and Chairman Nunn, who uh, could not uh, be here today but uh, sent his uh, support. Now, Mr. President, I want to introduce uh, some key individuals who have been partners with the National Performance Review efforts to prepare this reform initiative. The legislative uh, initiative is moving forward in both the Senate and the House. I'll introduce uh, first Senator John Glenn. Uh, in the weeks ahead, this administration is going to be working very carefully with Senator Glenn uh, in support of the legislation that he will be uh, introducing today and in support of the amendment uh, that I referred to earlier. And next, uh, Representative John Conyers, who along with the Chairman Ron Dellums uh, has already done important work on procurement reform in the Congress uh, and is moving legislation uh, forward uh, expeditiously. We want passage of this legislation on procurement reform this year in order to obtain the savings for deficit reduction and for the war against crime. Uh, let me uh, first of all introduce Senator John Glenn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Mr. President, it's truly an honor to be here uh, with both of you today to unveil the package that uh, you're presenting today and also the reform initiatives we're addressing at the same time. Last year, Americans voted for a change. You're tackling some of those changes and keeping that, that promise. And uh, in August, we began by enacting the uh, largest deficit reduction package in history. And so we welcome this package today as a follow-on uh, to some of those efforts. It's sorely needed, and I think it will go a long ways in helping to cut uh, government unnecessary government spending. We may all quibble about certain specific cuts in the package, but there should be no question that this package will let taxpayers keep more money in their pockets or make more efficient use of taxpayer dollars expended by the government. Uh, the Vice President has pursued the National Performance Review, Mr. President, and uh, I think you very wisely assigned that task to him, and he's been moving a forward, with, forward with it uh, uh, with the greatest of effort, and we've worked very closely with the Vice President in our efforts to improve 
how government functions. We're pleased that uh, our efforts together to reform the complex government procurement system have been included in this whole package. Uh, as mentioned, later today I'll introduce this comprehensive procurement reform package in the Senate. The legislation is called the Federal Acquisition Streamlining Act of 93, and it's aimed at streamlining the acquisition process and fulfilling the recommendations of both the National Performance Review, the Section 800 Review Panel, as well as some procurement reform legislation I have introduced in the past in previous Congresses and earlier this year. Now, drafting this bill was no small task, Mr. President, and frankly it could not have been achieved so quickly without the dedication of your administration. We have been able to agree with the administration, with the Armed Services Committee in the Senate, with the Senate Small Business Committee, not only on the principles to be included in the bill, but also to finalize such key provisions as procurement protest reform, the publication of settlements, contractor debriefing, clear statements of government quality requirements and solicitations, and language governing the use of consultants on federal projects. Now I know just reading that list is enough to put probably half the audience to sleep. And I'm under no illusions that once we announce this or put it in today that tomorrow morning the Washington Post and all the great papers across this country and the news media are going to feature this in banner headlines. Government moves to new efficiency. It just isn't going to happen that way. I think it was Carl Levin when we were working on this uh, one day not too long ago referred to this as the grunt work of government. The grunt work of government. And I think that's a very, a very apt title for it because uh, that's exactly what it is. It's a little like being an interior lineman in the NFL. Nobody hears of you, you get your paycheck regularly, but nobody really hears from you except one thing. You're very, very important to the success of the whole effort, of the whole team. And without that kind of effort, we just don't move forward. And so I see this, this grunt work of government probably won't be the big headlines tomorrow morning. It's not B2s and tanks or even health care or, or the things that uh, get the headlines. But it's, uh, it's the building blocks of good government, better government, and best government, which is what we're really trying to shoot for with this. So I was at a dinner last night in, uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio, and one of the uh, businessmen that was there said they no longer want government business, too much hassle, too many contracting problems. They've just forsworn that and gone their own direction, even though they make products that could well be used by the government. So we want to change all that. We want to make this more efficient, efficiency in government, which is what we're after with this. Uh, we want to see a downsize in the bureaucracy that uh, is, is uh, also addressed here today. Give people more responsibility in the bureaucracy, more accountability to do their jobs. The package contains a number of provisions to strengthen government financial management also through uh, some changes in what the CFOs are going to do, chief financial officers in the various departments and agencies of government, as well as the IGs, so that Americans can see what their money gets spent for and that it's spent very wisely. So Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, I applaud your efforts and we certainly look forward to working with you to get this passed just as quickly as possible. Thank you. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, I reflected on Senator Glenn's remarks. Uh, what we do in the House, John, is we invite Leon Panetta over, who is the most exciting salesman of these activities of anybody. Uh, <clears throat> and he spends uh, hours on hours uh, with the House Government Operations Committee. Uh, we're delighted to be here this day. This was the same room that President Clinton announced that Vice President Gore would head up the National Performance Review and the Reinventing Government activity. It was only a few months ago uh, that we, most of us, stood here and took this pledge that we were really going to deal with this whole $200 billion question of procurement. And we've made uh, a lot of progress, uh, some here today, some through the committee's report, uh, some through other activities. And the House uh, has passed two months ago the enhancement of competition and contracting, which will match up with Senator Glenn's work 
uh, that he will put in the hopper today. We're working with Congressman Bill Ford, Chairman of Education of Labor in the House, uh, John LaFosse, Small Business, Ron Dellums, Armed Services, so that uh, this bill that is uh, already crafted in the House will actually uh, move to the floor the, through the Rules Committee, and we expect uh, that we will have a, a very close fit between these two bills. Uh, these are, are important issues. Uh, we've got to encourage commercial product acquisition, streamline the procurements for those that are under $100,000, which lifts the threshold uh, from $25,000 now, and allows a small businessman uh, to be able to deal in enough quantity to even stay in business. We, of course, reduce paperwork. And I'm particularly enamored with the part that deals with uh, helping let vendors know up front what the performance test is going to be. What is it going to take uh, to win the bid in this job? and that we want to tell them and not keep it secret. Uh, we want to em enhance the GAO protest me mechanism so that anyone who feels that uh, he wants a review, uh, that there will be a way to do it. And we think that's uh, uh, very, very important. Uh, this all boils down to just three things. Simplification, openness in contracting, and commercial buying practices enhanced. When we can buy it off the shelf, we buy it off the shelf. No more specially constructed uh, uh, cigarette uh, ashtrays or uh, all the kinds of exotic. Uh, how about uh, hundreds of specs for uh, cookies? Uh, we, we've come across some, some beautiful things, uh, real doozies. But what I like about the administration's approach to this is it's not just uncovering problems of inefficiency, but it's doing something about it. And now we're not only investigating it and discovering it, but we're remedying it in many ways through the Chief Financial Officers Act, through strengthening the inspector generals throughout the departments, through uh, a more stringent oversight and uh, not only my committee, but Senator Glenn's as well. And then we take these findings and try to find a better way. And Mr. President, I commend the Vice President uh, for working so closely with us. And I'm happy to uh, join with you in the prediction that we can get this out before the end of the year. Thank you very much. As you know, there will be a more detailed uh, briefing that will begin shortly. Thank you for joining us on this occasion. Thank you.